Hello, it's Heather the Painter, and today in Corel Painter 2021, with a Wacom Intuos Medium Pro tablet and the standard pen, we are going to finish this image that was captured originally in a cell phone. So after we had used a different, couple different brushes in the background to create a little bit of a layered, slightly impressionistic, almost abstract look, we are now going to dive into this little cutie patootie, uh, my daughter, as the subject. So let's dive in. Now I'm going to want a little bit more of a realistic interpretation on her, which means we're going to want to rely more on oil brushes or chalk brushes, something that gives you a little bit more control in the resaturation, especially when you're cloning. Now I'm going to keep it limited in my papers from Artist Canvas, Gessoed Canvas, and in the background we typically will use the Artist Rough Paper. Um, for some of the sergeant brushes. It just does really well with it, and that's kind of what we kept it to. So I am going to pick a brush, and I'm going to go over to my... You know what? Let's use the last brush. We were in sergeant blocky background, and I'm going to start tying in the background to my little subject. I'm going to raise my opacity. Let's go to 70 and try that. Now I'm constantly keeping um, my hand on the keyboard so I can toggle shortcuts. Um, and I am clicking Command T. Command, whoa, moved. <laughs> Did not mean to do that. Command T, Command T on a Mac to toggle my tracing paper. Now I did add extra paper here, so this will show up white, which I don't want. I'm going to have to freehand that color of her dress. Turquoise is one of her favorite colors. And I keep accidentally dragging that layer. So anytime you drag, just quickly undo, Command Z, or Edit Undo. And I'm roughing this in because that's the main brush we used in the background, and that will help tie things together. But to bring back detail, we're going to rely on some oil brushes. It's okay to let some of the paper show through. I'm going to click this from clone mode to color mode and bring in some of the bra, uh, the dress. Extend that. Extend some of the greens. And I'll probably bring some other brushes down in that area too. Now I just added a lot of weight to our arm because they're almost the same color family and almost the same value actually. So I want to push some green back under that arm because that is not the size of her arm. Here we are. It's really important when you're painting a person um, specifically to keep different lines intact. So anytime there is a hard line, like a jawline, um, a nose if it's a profile, a forehead, uh, the arm, you want to keep those the same, um, if not a slightly more flattering version of themselves. Don't, don't add extra weight or length or um, just you don't want to drag them downwards. It's going to change the whole appearance and mom or dad or grandma or grandpa are going to notice it. Maybe they may not be able to articulate what's bothering them about it, but they will know something's different and they may not like it. So try to keep the likeness as strong as possible with their piece. And I'm going to go to File, Save As, number five. We can already see the little one. And I'm going to change brushes. Let's go over to oils. One of my all-time favorite brushes is a smeary round, and I'm going to click reset so it looks the same for you. And I'm going to make it uh, make it larger by size, or if you click command option, 
on a Mac and it's control alt on a PC and then draw a line, it will snap to that size. So command option. And I'm going to make a test mark. And that's just not working for me. So we are going to change the reset. Let's change it to 15 and the bleed down to eh, let's 30. Let's do that. Let's take the bleed even lower. Let's go to 20. Works for me. Okay. So I've got opacity is pretty high. I'm going to chicken out when I get into the skin in a second. So we're going to keep it at 100 for now. Resats at 15, bleeds at 20. Feature with my size currently at it is, the feature is going to change according to your size. With a brush that's almost 57, my feature is at 7. I'm going to click clone. So this is now in clone mode. And I'm going to start cloning into her face. I actually don't mind the 100% opacity. I want to make sure that I'm getting all of the major lines, especially you see here, it's defining her forehead, defining her jawline, defining the bottom of her jawline and her cheek and her little chin. All of those really help the brain build the likeness going, oh, that's her. So we need to define those. Now, because my brush is acting extra soft, I'm going to take my bleed down to zero. There we go. Now we get some harder marks. Have a little bit more control with this brush. And I'm almost scrubbing in along her features in clone mode, and then I can take a heavier brush, say a chalk brush or a heavy um, uh, real bristle brush later on to break it up and make it look more painterly. But I do want to define her first without bringing in a photograph, meaning, you know, we'd bring in straight clone and then muck it up from there. So I'm taking little breaks meaning I'm lifting my brush often where the forms of her face are changing. And I'm constantly, constantly, constantly looking at the clone source. I'm going to take my feature down a little bit lower to four. There we go. When you take your feature lower, it makes your brush a little bit more solid. It's less streaky, less bristly. I'm going to leave some of that blue in the paper showing through. clean up that area around her eye. Now I love in paintings like this to actually incorporate background colors into the hair, so I'm not going to try to get all of that green out. If anything, I need to exaggerate that more as we move into the hair. I do need to get her eye shape right. That's very, very important when painting a person. I'm going to drop my opacity to about 40. So I'm just making light marks. Okay, going back up to 100. The opacity is determining how heavy my brush is handling it. And after I clone in, I'm going to go over these areas with a smaller brush that has some texture to freehand some over top of her. Ah, that kept moving. I believe something has turned on my tablet to pick it up and move. I 
And again, I like some of the extra green that's coming in from the background that's floating in onto her arm. So I don't want to get rid of all of that. So this brush is really great for skin, for anything that you want to have more control over. Um, and this also pertains to if you're painting animals or still life. Oh, that little wisp of hair. Now, the more time you can commit to a piece, the more, I think the more fun you can have, the more painterly you can make it. But for the sake of the tutorial not being, you know, four hours, I'm going to try to show you as much as I can here. That neck needs to make sense, so let me bring this out. Drop the opacity to 30. Okay, bring it up to about 40. Do her ear. Where's the ear? And I'm going to do a file save as. To the top of her head, although I think I might define that with another brush. You see where I need some more definition. Let's go into 100% opacity, get the edge of her ear, the edge of her chin, that kind of meshes her jawline there. I need that defined. There are some things you just can't mush, even if you're going abstract. There we go. It shows her age. Bring those little highlights back. And again, we're just doing all cloning right now. Filling in that area. If you ever don't like something that you had painted, you can either mask it out, undo it, or bring it back with a soft cloner. I'm gonna bring back 100% opacity on her fingertips here. Much better. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this up. This brush is, it's okay to bring back detail, but I feel like it's getting too, too photorealistic and too soft. So I need something that has a little bit more texture as I go back into detail. Try not to default into my detail mode. All right, all right, no more detail. So I'm gonna pick up something that has a little bit either more, um, I was about to say salt, but more chalk or something more painterly. So in chalk, we have oil pastel, or what could we sketch with? Um, the Artist Oils Real Tapered Wet Flat is a really good one. So let's go to Artist Oils. Real Tapered Wet Flat. I believe we just played with this one. I'm going to put the nib back to a wedge profile. Okay, I like the wedge. And let's, let's work on the large areas and then we'll take a chalk and work on the smaller areas. 
So for example, let's work on some hair. And this brush does not, I don't think this does cloner. No, this brings back a straight image, which I don't want. So we're gonna use this just in color. Take some dark colors, and I'm gonna leave the greens in here because I really like what's happening. But I need to take that blend down. It's gonna to be too blendy. Let me take the blend down to 10. Oh, much better, okay. Now we're talking. So if we take our blend down to 10, then it allows us to take more color and put it down versus it's just getting smeary. So I'm gonna put my blend to 10, and I'm gonna leave it without impasto. So I'm not gonna paint with depth. Now I need to define more of what's going on with this hair. I don't mind that there are extra browns and colors coming through here. So we've already defined her jaw, we've defined her ear. But I do want a little bit more depth in it, meaning I need some darker color. So I'm pulling in some very dark tones. And I'm just sketching. Which, I'm gonna add a new layer here. Anytime I do something drastic, I add a new layer in case I chicken out. And I love how there's different colors interacting, currently act, um, interacting with her hair. I wanna keep those. So I'm just sampling them and going darker. I'm filling in that head of hair. She came to me recently and um, apparently, in her mind, she told me that it just takes hairspray to change your hair color. She's four, <laughs> so I had to tell her, nope, 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 that's not how it works. And I'm gonna bring in more colors in her hair because I want this to be more abstract. only what we painted in painter was something we could do like permanent makeup I think she'd wear this hairstyle every day bring some darks in here now I do want to keep highlights on the top of her head because she had some nice backlighting That'll also give her a little bit of separation from the background. And a good backlight in a painting is worth its weight in gold. Or paintbrushes, or whatever you want to compare it to. Warm it up a bit. Uh, I need a warmer hair light back here as it cools off. And again, just sketching. Some highlights. Bring some greens maybe back in here. Need to do something back here with it. That's better. Undo. Smaller brush. Now this brush is also great for large areas of the skin that you want to clean up. You can cut into areas, meaning define. I don't think I like that light being right there. Let's darken that up. I'm going to do File, Save As, 8, and I need another texture. So let's introduce another texture with Chalk Oil Pastel. I'm 
Now chalks you have to be really careful with because they will pick up your paper texture. So let's change this over to a gessoed canvas. I might go back to artist canvas so I get a little bit more texture. And I'm going to take my bleed down to zero. Uh, let's go to 10% just to give a little bit of blend. There we go. Enable brush calibration. Ooh, okay, this one's super sensitive. So heavy, light. And as we're sketching, I'm gonna try to go light handed. But it brings some beautiful paper textures in. Very nice. And I think we're going to use this brush and some others to finish up on the next segment.